pillage, plunder, um, the abduction of young girls, the threatening of uh, school teachers, uh, these recent incidents in terms of acid. Girls attacked with acid for daring to go to school. Despite initial gains, women's rights and even women themselves are increasingly under attack. The attacks against women, both external and within the family, have gone up. Domestic violence has increased. Women, as a result of severe depression, have begun burning themselves in epidemic numbers. The very specific statistics about maternal mortality, literacy, uh, infant mortality, uh, just age uh, uh, range has not improved. Since the US invasion of Afghanistan, cosmetically, things have improved for women. Yes, there are women in parliament now. Yes, there are driving schools and beauty schools for women. But really, if you look beneath the surface, has life improved for women in Afghanistan? Absolutely not. Rethink Afghanistan is just out. The latest from Brave New Films, the people who brought you out foxed, among other things. The full-length feature opened in New York this weekend and is about to come to Washington, D.C., sponsored by The Nation, Alternate, Madre, and Credo. The film challenges some of the basic narratives around the war in Afghanistan, like that one, that U.S. intervention would bring equality to women and girls. What it's up against is this sort of messaging from the White House. I'm not interested in just being in Afghanistan for the sake of being in Afghanistan or saving face or in some way uh, you know, sending a message that uh, America uh, is here for, for the duration. I think it's important that we match strategy to resources. What I'm not also going to do, though, is put the resource question before the strategy question. Until I'm satisfied that we've got the right strategy, I'm not going to be sending uh, some young man or woman over there uh, beyond what uh, we already have. So what is that right strategy as the U.S.-led war in Afghanistan enters its ninth year this week? It kind of seems up for grabs. Our next guest believes we the people can sway decision making. Robert Greenwald is founder of Brave New Foundation and Brave New Films, and he's heading off to D.C. for the launch of Rethinking Afghanistan. Robert, is, is it just my ridiculous optimism or are we really at a moment where public opinion could make a difference here? Well, I think public opinion, if activated, could make a difference. It's I mean, the public is so far ahead of the elected officials and so far ahead of the Washington think tanks, all of whom essentially have been marching in lockstep about the right war and all of those things. And I can tell you, you get off the plane in Kabul, you look around the third poorest country in the world, think about that, and you see people in the worst ki kinds of conditions, and on every corner are men with guns and barbed wire and tanks. So it's fundamentally approaching social and economic problems with military solutions. And somehow the American people are picking that up. The polls are showing it. And what we're asking everyone to do and the listeners to do is use the film as a tool. Yeah. You are doing exactly that. We're going to hear more. But to go back, you started this project back in January when really that was the consensus. There's Iraq, but then there's Afghanistan. Afghanistan's the right war. Why? Why'd you go? Well, we started it because it seemed that uh, the evidence that was we were getting and the research we were doing, and I had reread The Best and the Brightest, which seemed exactly as indicative of what we were doing here. The account of what happened in the Camelot years on Vietnam. Yeah, cross out Kennedy, say Obama, cross out communism, say terrorism. And it gave us a chill because we know what happens to an administration when it gets sucked in the war. And every hope and dream of the Obama administration and more importantly, the people behind him will be destroyed if we don't stop this war from escalating. What were the questions that people had for you most often around Afghanistan when you came back or, or when you left? What did they want to know? In Afghanistan or here? I'm thinking here. Like, yeah. What is the key questions that people have here about this policy that we're all paying for? Why? And the problem is, and even the folks in D.C. who believe this, you get five different answers. Mm. So what our response, Laura, has been, we say to people, you know what, we don't, there's no clear answer for it, but ask some fundamental questions. How many troops? What's the cost? How long? What's our exit strategy? And there are no answers to those questions. To me, that means it's flawed policy. Even the question of who are we fighting? isn't entirely clear. Here's a clip from Rethink Afghanistan. Rethink Afghanistan, just out. You can get more information at our website. This clip talks to the distinction between Al-Qaeda and Taliban. Not so clear to most, even those making policy. Take a look. 
Not so very long ago, General uh, David Petraeus admitted that there, there, what I'm saying, which is that there's not much of a uh, Al Qaeda presence in uh, Afghanistan, if any at all. No Al Qaeda at all in Afghanistan. Is that an exaggeration, General Petraeus, or is that true? No, I would agree with that assessment. We are fighting a war for empty buildings that Al Qaeda used to occupy. And what we're saying is now we own the hotel and you're not coming back in. It's, it's a silly notion. One of the biggest point is that U.S. has to know how to fight Al-Qaeda because U.S. is fighting in the, way, the classic way. The classic war is not appropriate for a non-classic enemy because Al-Qaeda is non, not a classic kind of enemy. To have a force, to have a place, to have a location, and to have an army. The whole idea that somehow if you smash the cave <laughs> that, that there will be no terrorist attack is incredible. A clip from Rethink Afghanistan. Robert Greenwald is here. Robert, I watched the film and afterwards I was more concerned than ever that even our policymakers actually have no idea what they're doing. Is that a little unfair? Well, it's really truly hard in this case. I mean, we've talked to lots of people and interviewed lots of people. And it, it's again, it's a fundamental issue that doesn't make a lot of sense. The more you dig, the more questions. The good news, I think, is that, you know, they're very smart people in the Obama administration. They're not ideologically driven to take us to war the way Bush was. And they're, they're th rethinking the policy right now. Are they talking to people like this? Robert Baer, former CIA advisor? Um, Bob talks to as many people as he possibly can, and they're talking to other people with the differing opinions, again, unlike the Bush administration. And the election, Laura, was such a disaster, mm. beyond their expectations, the stuffing of ballot boxes, that they've really starting to rethink it and look at other options now, which is why it's so critical people take action now. The one thing I'll tell you is every elected official we've talked to said they're not hearing from their constituents about this issue. Well, we're going to change that together. We're going to change yes. that with our new media strategies. More on that in just a sec. But General McChrystal on the ground, the commander on the ground, wants 40,000 more troops. We had Jeremy Scahill in here last week. He said, oh, no, rather we had reporter, an independent reporter here in the studio, Rick Rowley just back from Afghanistan, he said the people he spoke to on the ground, Commander, said we would need 600,000 trips to make the difference. Is McChrystal going to get his forces and will it be the just beginning of many more? Well, as there's a whole section in the, tr in the film about troops and how many troops you need, if you're not fighting terrorists but you're fighting counterinsurgency, it means you're fighting a civil war and you're going to put a civil war down. And for that, you need four, five, six hundred thousand troops, which will never happen. So it really doesn't make sense. I hope he won't get the troops, but part of that job, again, is ours. It's our job. It's amazing what phone calls will do and letters will do and action will do at this moment in time.